can you imagine how f***ed it is being a nine-year-old girl and doing something that is literally a community service? I Literally a community service. That is actually what it is. And like, oh yeah, your neighbor called the cop on you. Like, what the f***, man? I thought we could briefly appreciate sort of like the mind of your average, like, homeowners association racist boomer. This is a um, police body cam footage where, for once, we are not going to be rooting against the police officer over the course of this. So that's going to be cool, okay? According to Twitter, this person is a chairman of a local Republican Party. I don't know if that's true, and I don't need to because it's spiritually true. Uh, I believe this is true. Uh, you will, too, after watching this, okay? I don't need facts, all right? It feels true. How are you? What's going on? Man called an non-emergency police line to report a girl who was spraying spotted lanternflies in Caldwell, New Jersey. New Jersey has a stomp it out campaign encouraging residents to kill the invasive species that is harmful to plants. There's and a trees. Little, little black woman walking and spraying stuff on the sidewalks and trees on Elizabeth and Florence. Little I don't know what the hell woman. she's doing. It scares me though. Did you have uh, any like clothing description or anything? Ah, uh, she's a real, real small woman, r r real tiny. Uh, she's got a hood on. Uh, you can't miss her. Hi. When the officer arrived, he found a nine-year-old girl. Nine-year-old girl scaring this guy. Oh uh, yeah, this um, this tiny woman, like four feet tall. You know, um, this adult woman who's four feet tall for some reason. I'm getting real spooked over here. What's going on? Is that your mom? What's that? Oh, what are you using the sponsor? Terrifying. I'm glad they blurred her her appearance because otherwise people might die of a fright. This tiny baby that had the cops called on her. Oh, what are you using the sponsor? You're trying to catch him? Mm -hmm. Is this your mom coming down the street? Yeah. Okay. Someone just called in and said that she was alone spraying something on the grass. I see that. Look at the fucking mom's reaction. Look at the fucking mom's reaction. We see the cop walks up to her like a black woman after talking to her daughter. It's like, she's like, okay, what, what's happening? It's like, oh yeah, your lantern fly daughter. Look at this. Someone just called in and said that she was alone spraying something on the grass. She's catching the. I see that. Yeah, so cool. I'm she oh, you know, Gordon. Really okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can I just get your information? Sure. She knew who it was. You know Gordon? Asshole. She knew exactly who it was. Sorry. Joseph. Are you serious? Yeah, I guess he saw it. I'm not sure. I'm not Is sure. Not, does he not live across the street from me? I saw it too, and I thought, wow, yeah. she's doing a school project. Yeah, somebody yeah. else helped her. She's <laughs> right. like, just getting the lantern. She's okay. like, mommy, she's infested. No, she's obviously fine. We are You're obviously street. next door neighbors. Yeah. I yelled okay. him one of his, his wife. Right. Um, no. no, you're not in trouble. How many did you kill? How many trees did you save? So starved are we for, like, positivity. You know, these rare moments where the cop isn't doing the bad thing. Vosh, does the cop have to do this? Uh, yeah. If you come out on a call, that's because dispatch sent you. Um, and if dispatch sent you, you have to have, like, something. Like, just literally, like, who's involved, blah, blah. Um, the cop is doing the bare minimum here because he knows that this is stupid. Yeah. They're bad. I have to speak with the girl's mother. He talked to Gordon LaShaw, the neighbor. Love they're giving his name, by the way. F this guy. It's water. She's catching lantern flies. She really? She said she lives right here. Yeah, she's catching lantern flies. All right, I'll see. What a weirdo, huh? That's what this guy had to say. So this nine-year-old girl that he was scared of was a neighbor, so he had to have known. What a what what a what a wacko that adult, four-foot-tall, black woman all right i'll see i'll see you later the cop just pulls off which again like that's all the re cop could reasonably do um joseph and her older daughter spoke in front of the caldwell town council after the incident racism intentional or not it's still racism i'm not here to label anyone only to share my point of view as a black woman a black mother and a black resident in this town. She's not only doing something- Oh, trigger warning, oh my God, terrifying. 
Look at how intimidatingly large she is. I'd be scared too if I saw this person looking at a tree with a water bottle. Amazing for our environment. She was doing something that made her feel like a hero. Can you imagine how f it is being a nine-year-old girl and doing something that is literally a community service? I Literally a community service. That is actually what it is. And like, oh yeah, your neighbor called the cop on you. Like, what the f***, man? Um, I've talked about this a little bit before, but this feels like incredibly relevant. When I was in high school, when I was in my senior year, I took a community relations extracurricular course. It was college level. It had to do with like um, communications, I think. It was like a comm course. And it was taught by, you're going to hate me, it was taught by a, a, a pair of cops at my local, at Beverly Hills High School. See, I, I always liked public speaking. And, uh, you know, it, it was it was basically like, a, well, how do you deal with sticky situations, you know? Like, conversationally, like, how do you deal with that? And the cops, uh, they had some extra time, so they, they, they did the course, you know? It was actually a pretty interesting course. It was all about, like, um, how do you navigate the social fabric? And, and I have a distinct memory, a distinct memory. Um, this is, I've told this story before, this is the one time that, like, Albert Einstein was in my class, because after I did my speech, everyone clapped. Uh, this is the one time it's true. Yeah, this is the one where, yeah, thank you, Flavio, you remember, yeah. Um, because I'm, you know, I, I like public speaking and blah blah We were given an exercise, and it was, uh, everyone in the class was given, a, it was a small class. We were given a prompt. If we were, so in this prompt, we are a uh, police chief. We're, we're a police chief of like a large uh, precinct. And um, yeah, see, vermin vouchers. We were given like a difficult situation to respond to uh, at a town hall community meeting where we're being accosted by a citizen. So basically it's like, okay, imagine you're in this position of authority. Like how do you deal with a, like a, a grievance from a citizen? You know what I mean? And my prompt was a a person a person accosted me at a town hall because I didn't send somebody out from dispatch after they made a call that was obviously racially motivated. Like a guy called to the cops, said, "Hey, scary, spooky black woman, four feet tall," and I didn't send someone through the precinct. And then that guy showed up at the town hall meeting to say, "Like, well, why didn't you send someone?" So I had to give a speech on, like, the misuse of, of public resources or something. I wish I could say I remember any of that. Um, I think I was, you, had, you gotta be diplomatic in these, in, 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 you know, in the prompt, right? You can't just, like, dab on them. But I think it's so, uh, like, I don't know. It's so enduring to me that this is, like, a common enough occurrence. Not only that sociologists and nerds talk about it. I thought it was about the police unlawfully killing someone. It, that might have been a second one? Uh, possibly. I think I, there were a couple of prompts that we were given over the course of the semester within between classes that had to do with, like, I guess, rhetorical strategies. The point that I'm getting at here is that, like, this is a thing that happens often enough that it's used as, like, I don't know, briefs and prompts in, in educational courses. Like, it's so f***ed up. We saw this with the Zimmerman thing as well, where you had a, a Trayvon Martin who was just dabbing down the street. And then Zimmerman calls the cops, like, rabies infested, spit flecking from his mouth, you know? This fucking kid, this guy's got a fucking hoodie, we gotta do something. And the cop on the phone is like, sir, can you please not do anything? And Zimmerman's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it! It's, it's such a common issue. And it really goes a long way towards, like, making you feel like less of the community, like, less a part of the community. And that's something that can't really be empirically demonstrated, if that makes any sense. So often, like, metrics, metrics of racism are, are, are sort of like, oh, well, income or, like, housing, redlining. But there's stuff that isn't really easy to measure. And this, this means, like, a lot towards those metrics. It's just really difficult to, like, properly, empirically, you know, like, number them out. I, I, I don't even know how you'd begin to do that outside, like, general feeling of community disillusionment. Oh, I'm very happy that uh, I wasn't accosted at nine. You know, my brother and I, you know, this is going to be crazy. I'm white, if you couldn't tell. My uh, my little brother's white, and he would walk around Beverly Hills, you know, late at night all the time, be fine. But when he started hanging out uh, with some of his sports friends, a couple of whom were black, that's when the cops started asking him, hey, what are you gentlemen doing tonight? You got any plans? You heading home? And it's because our fucking neighbors, not like our direct neighbors, I mean like people in Beverly Hills as they walked around, would um would would call them it's like oh yeah well these these hoodlums you know oh yeah sure hoa 
God damn. I, I already told the story that I had a cute, cute girl in my car. We were parked fairly near my house. Residential neighborhood, street parking, no licensing needed to park there. It's literally just street parking that anyone can park at. And we're both chilling in the front seats, driver and passenger, talking. Not e We're not even, like, hands on each other. I'm serious, like, we're literally talking. This isn't a euphemism. Can cop car rolls by with his gigantic high beam flashlight rolling past our window, shining on us, you know? Got us to, to skedaddle. Literally, just in the front. Because... I have to assume it was the, the the house directly to our right. You know, oh, well, there are hoodlums in a car outside. This neighborhood is like, is disgusting. Or sorry, not neighborhood. No, yeah, Beverly Hills is disgusting. This attitude is disgusting. It Like, it's, it's filthy. This ridiculous suburban paranoia. Beverly Hills isn't even a suburb. It's like a, well, parts of it are, but the part I lived in wasn't. It's, it's, it's genuinely like revolting, you know? These like, these, these paranoid upper middle class f***s who have nothing to do, but um, peer outside their window. I assume it's because she was black. No, she was Ju white Jewish. Uh, she was like a mousy, nerdy girl. She was like a hundred pounds soaking wet. I could have thrown her into the house as retribution for the police call. Ridiculous. Yeah, it must have been anti-Semitism. Similar story of a Texas mom penalized for having their kid outside in suburbia. Oh, I saw this. Yeah, this is like some genuine, this is some like modernity, like depression fuel shit. Suburban mom handcuffed jailed for making eight-year-old son walk half a mile home. Heather Wallace pled guilty to child endangerment and can no longer work with kids. Oh, sorry, your life's ruined. You, 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 your, your kid walked for five minutes on their own. Sorry, goodbye. If you're not an American who lives in certain parts of America, you don't understand. But like, American like suburban paranoia is insane. This, these are the same people who are like, every Halloween, it's like, okay, don't have any candy because drug dealers are putting fentanyl and razor blades in every M&M, you know? Half a mile, that's like a 20-minute walk, right? No, it's a 10-minute walk for a kid, or like a 7, 8-minute walk for an adult. Yeah, 5 minutes for half a mile is pretty standard. 5 minutes for half a mile? What, for a run? 10 minutes to a mile? Nobody can walk that fast. Shut up, the autistic brewer. We're not running here. Heather Wallace's oldest son, 8-year-old Aiden, was driving us to... Oh, so, well, hold on was driving his two brothers. I was like, wait a second, hold on. Is this child endangerment? Just this kid's got like a, like a, like a, one of those like samurai sandals on to reach the uh, accelerator, you know, from, from the seat. As they returned from karate one afternoon, Wallace asked Aiden to walk the rest of the way home, half a mile in quiet suburb Waco, Texas, so he could calm down. For this, she was arrested, handcuffed, and thrown in jail. She was charged with endangering a child, a felony carrying a mandatory minimum of two years in prison. What? She was finally able to speak out after completing a six-month pre-trial diversion program to get the tra uh, charges dropped, but her arrest remains on the books, easily searchable by employers. Unbelievable. It's A lot of it is like this stranger danger shit. People are really paranoid that somebody's going to snatch up their kids, which like, man, I don't, I don't want to say it doesn't happen at all, but like, it doesn't really, that's not really true. Do you, do you guys remember that one video? Can somebody find it? It went viral like two months ago, and it was like some white woman who was like, hey, if you ever park at an Applebee's and you come back and your car has like one spot of dust on it, that means a rapist is waiting in a bush nearby. Can, can anyone find that for me? It's all suburban paranoia. It's, it's people who, it's people who listen to um, true crime podcasts. It's, it's white women who have nothing going on in their lives, so they want to imagine that they're, like, the, the future victim of a Taken story. Like, like every... It's, it's people giving themselves anxiety disorders. Like, this manifests in so many fucking ways, and so much of it is tied to suburbia. This has to... This is like a social alienation thing. When you don't talk to your neighbors, when you don't do anything, when you just live in, like, a box with a lawn around it, and you don't interact with society at all, you develop this, like, insane cabin fever that, that isolates you from the reality of the world that you live in. And it makes you a f***ing freak. It's disgusting. This? Oh, thank God. Did you find it? Is this what I wanted? Oh, f yes, dude. Absolutely. This went viral. Attention, ladies. Please take notes. 107,000. If you see this, run. If you see money in your windshield, you need to run away fast. They're trying to get you to get out of your car and grab the money. If you see this, you need to get in your car some other way. 
this is a sign that this is probably laced with something. Uh, people's Fentanyl. hands have gone numb. They have passed out. It is a trick. Do not touch this. If you see this, they have labeled this. This is what they're labeling. They're saying this is a woman who is alone, that someone has been watching you. They see you're alone. They think you're vulnerable. You need to go home and you need to cut this off. This is meant to pause you so that someone from underneath the car can cut your Achilles heel and so that you're distracted. It gives them enough time to get to you. See, this one looks the most innocent, but you're gonna notice this one. It's gonna be placed here after you're already in your car. Their goal is to get you out of your car. You just wanna check your surroundings, okay? Because there's so many different ways. If you see a shopping cart next to your car, draw your nine millimeter and unload the entire clip d d randomly in all directions. This is anxiety disorder. This is mental. This is mental illness. Yeah, this is mental illness. Okay, I refuse to respect this. None of this shit is happening. Okay, human traffickers are not kidnapping white women outside of Applebee's. Okay, they are uh, lying to migrant workers and illegal immigrants and then driving them over to like dungeons and compounds where they can be sold off. They are not. They are not involving the entire white suburban police precinct with the disappearance of one lady. Um, that it just no. Just stop. Shut up. Oh my god. Stop. If you hear boss music, drive, uh, draw your 9mm, yeah. You're saying not even slavers want to deal with white women? It does bother me a little bit that the Taken movies did so much to give people, like, a picture of, of like, criminal terror, and it made so many people paranoid, when, like, overwhelmingly, the victims of everything white women fear are not white women. They're migrants, poor people, like, poor people, like, poor, poor, homeless people, and people in, like, really shitty parts of town, like, ghettos and stuff. Those are the people, because when those people disappear, the cops don't care. And nobody's there to, like, freak out about it. Um, illegal immigrants disappear? What, you think they're going to go to the police? No, of course not. Kidnap an illegal immigrant, you're basically scot free. Like, what are they, they going to do? They're outside the system. Um, any of their friends go to the cops. Uh, and they're on the books, too. Like, it, it, it's, it's, but it's always white women. Because the audience is more sympathetic to white women, so of course Taken has to be about a white woman, it can't be about anything else, which means it's like every story has to be about like reinforcing this fucking true crime podcast bullshit where uh, don't get murdered everyone, where everyone's like clutching their purse every time they walk within eight kilometers of like a young guy with a snapback uh, when they go to their bank to withdraw the $3,000 they're going to use to pay their rent in suburbia. Like, it, it, uh... yeah, Native people as well. Yeah, like uh, Native Americans. Like uh, pe a lot of people who disappear on... um on uh, uh, reservations, because the uh, infrastructure there is like really bad. It's very poor people there. There's literally a name for this, missing white woman syndrome. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a thing. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. This is the female version of the knocking a gun off a shooter's hands video trend. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking... Uh, oh, the reason I'm talking about this right now is because this is nothing more than the uh, liberal progressive equivalent of the first thing that we watched, this. This is the same ideology. These are the same. This woman might have voted for Barack Obama, and this guy might be a Republican political um, leader, but they're, it's both the same ideology. Both of these are facilitated by the exact same, like, highly alienated, like, xenophobic fear of, of society externalized against different groups. This guy's obviously racist. This, I don't fucking know. The guy's an elected Republican council member. Yeah, that tracks. Oh my god. Didn't even blur her face in this one. This is the, the... Is this the girl? Or is it this girl or this girl? I don't... What? Terrifying. Scary. I don't even know. It's the tiny one? Fuck. Okay. Yeah, jump scare. Jesus. It's the one who looks nine, you fool. I don't have a frame of reference. I don't know how tall this podium is. Also, I don't know how old nine-year-olds look. I don't go outside of my house. You know, I haven't been nine in 20 years, right?